The 13th of October is Ada Lovelace Day. She was the daughter of Lord Byron. In fact, she was the only legitimate child of Lord Byron about 200 years ago, and she was reckoned by many to be the world's first computer programmer. So I brought along some of my mathematical toys by way of celebrating and as a tribute to her life. The first one is one she would have been familiar with because this appeared 200 years earlier. This is Napier's Bones, a reproduction of it, an extraordinarily simple way of calculating difficult numbers. For instance, if I want to calculate 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, that's 12,345 multiplied by 6, for instance. I take away the other bones, these would be bones, which I don't want in the way, and then I just go across this line here. I need a bit of paper just to write down the numbers. I start off with a zero here. And now I add up on the little diagonals here, these two numbers together. You can see how the lines diagonal come down. Three and a four is a seven, so I put a seven next to it. And then I've got two and an eight is ten, so I put a zero and there's a one to carry over. So the next lot is one and two is three, but with a carryover, it becomes a four. And the last two figures are one and six, which is a seven, and finally a little zero at the end. And I then look at my bit of paper and find I've got this number here, I can cross out the first zero, it doesn't count, 74,070, and that's the answer to that calculation. What a brilliant little piece of work. So that's something she would have been familiar with because at that time it was already available. Here's something that I came from across in my own childhood, which was the calculator that came out in the 1950s for adding up numbers. It was actually for pounds, shillings and pence, this one, but I'll just use it for calcul simple calculation. And if I want to add up something like seven and a five, that's 75, it appears in the thing, then add to it something like um, a six. Now the six is a red one, so it has to go up over the top and round the corner into the next column to make hundreds. Six and a three, and that would be the answer. And when I want to move on to the next calculation, here's the way I erase or cancel button. A beautiful, simple bit of mechanism. In addition to that, though, they also included in this version, which I didn't have in the one I had as a child, a slide rule and an ordinary rule inside that. Metric and imperial, very clever. The slide rule I did have to use a lot as an engineering student in my day, so I can remember that when I set up the one and the two here, for instance, one and the two, here's the two times table. Two times two is four. Two times four is eight. Two times seven is 14. You have to watch out for the decimal places and make sure you can work out what they are. So a very clever little calculation machine, but it's principally used for adding up on this, on this side here. That's a, that's a calculator. So she would have been familiar with that. Here's a simple one which the Japanese company, Wonder Company of Tokyo, produced in the 1980s as well. It's simply a times table, and you rock it back and forward. Children would use these as a ruler at school, but if you want to say, what's um, 4 times 5? Just flick the ruler. Oh, there's the answer, 20. What about uh, 8 times 7? Flick the ruler. Oh, there's 56 appears in the window. So as you're rock rock rocking the thing back and forward, it's giving you the value of those two pieces, those two figures multiplied together. Math is often used for sort of practical jokes and fun and magic. And here's a lovely example of a magic set of six. Little pieces of six with very specially arranged numbers so that you ask a person to add up those five, four four-figure numbers, 5,349 and so on, in their head or with a calculator. But immediately, even before they even picked up the pen, you can say it's 28924. How can I say that? Well. There's a trick to it. i do it one more just to show that I can do it for anything. Four figures, 2,977 plus the other four figures, quite a big number. I need to say the answer is 23867. How do I do it? I can't tell you. It's a meta magic trick, but something very, very clever going on there. <laughs> Another one looks like a magic trick, but actually it's a very clever little calculating machine. Console the calculating monkey from about 1911. This used to be an old biscuit tin top, I think. And all you do is put his two feet there along the bottom line and say we want to multiply four by nine. Four and a nine. And the answer in the box where he's holding is four nine to 36. Or let's have two times 11. Two times 11 be 22 in the box. Very clever. So a very simple little mechanical motion thing which allows him to produce the answer to simple two figures being calculated and put together. 
I like practical jokes, and these two came out, one just after this had been invented by Clive Sinclair's first calculator was back in the late 50s. This came out in about 1960s, I think. When you push the buttons, oh, <laughs> yes, it squirts water in your face. There's a tiny little mechanism inside, which I'm afraid is not very kind, water inside, and when you squeeze it, leaving it on the desk for someone to try, they get squirted in the face. Mm. A more sophisticated version of a practical joke is this one here called the Rongulator. So this one, you turn it on, and you say cheerfully, let's multiply 8 times 2 equals, oh, 11, now that's wrong. <laughs> the answer is every time you press the 11, the equal sign, then and only then, it takes away 5. Exactly 5, no more, no less than 5. So you don't want to press that because it'll take away another 5 and another 5. The Rongulator, just leave it on the desk and drive your friends mad. This is the most sophisticated version of a pocket calculator I've come across. It's just a delightful bit of mechanism. As you squeeze it, it's also tilted at the time. It does this lovely action. Slow motion, that's beautiful. Look at it on the sides, the mechanism is just superb. Isn't that beautiful? And then when you finish the calculation, you squeeze it up, put it in your pocket, and it's done. Superb. Here's something that I just wanted to show because it, it comes, it's not a calculator as such, it's something that gardeners use nowadays for a bit of calculation, I suppose, a geometrical calculation, but it was invented, we think, probably as, as more as two or three thousand years ago, the Egyptians would have used it. It's the old three, four, five triangle. If you've got a flower bed and you've got the grass, you want to cut the flower bed and make a very, very clear corner, you have something here which has got four units, say four, 40 foot, four tens of 40, that way, three tens of 30 this way, then you must make sure there's five going this way, right up the knot. And when you've got those ropes nice and tight and you put pegs in the ground to make them sure they're really tight, here, just here, you have a very, very precise right angle with long bits of string. That's an enormous help to gardeners who are trying try to lay out gardens and make them look very, very neat and so on. So exact right angle produced by a three, four, five triangle, produced perhaps about three or four thousand years ago, a long, long time ago. It was a very, very old invention. And the last item is something that Ada would have been familiar with. It's a, it's a way of, of uh, putting in data into a computer. And she and Babbage, who she knew, were thinking of using something like this to be able to put data into their computer machine that they were trying to invent. And I think because uh, the 10th of December is Ada's birthday, it's the bicentenary of her birthday, I think it is, we ought to see if what happens if we put this particular piece of card with all the little holes in it into our little machine. The point about this lady was she wasn't just interested in numerics. She did realise, which Babbage didn't, that you could use something like this for something much wider than just figures. You could use it for poetry or art or music or something. Well, let's go. This is a musical box, so we'll see what it would have done. Oh, yes. Happy birthday. That's her tune, of course. How fitting. Happy birthday, dear Ada. <laughs>